Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Today we are working with a chipped and filthy Warhammer figure. Ordinarily I would strip this down to bare metal and start over, but this one has some sentimental value. The original painter of this is deceased, and so instead of destroying their paint job, I want to clean it and restore it. I want to make this mini look as good as it ever did, and I want to preserve it for many years to come. So here's the mini. It's a witch hunter from Warhammer Quest. This was part of a collection that I bought on Craigslist. The models have been stored in open cardboard boxes in an attic. When I went through the collection there was dirt and dead bugs and even a fair number of mouse droppings. We've got our work cut out for us, but we also might be set up for a really satisfying restoration. The first thing I'm going to do is try to safely clean off the dirt and grime. Here I've dipped a cotton swab into denatured alcohol that I want to use as cleaning solvent. I'm testing on a small segment to see whether or not it damages the paint. I found that a little bit of paint was coming off onto the swab, so I diluted the alcohol with water and tried again. I ended up finding a mix of two parts water to one part alcohol that was a useful cleaning solution that didn't harm the paint job. I cleaned as much of the model as I could with this cotton swab but there were a lot of tight corners that the swab just couldn't reach. For these, I made the switch to a tiny bit of cotton held with very fine tweezers. This cleaning step is a lot of fun. Now we can see the original colors of the mini, and they are beautiful. I should tell you that I've been watching a lot of videos about fine art restoration, especially from Baumgartner Restoration. They are so satisfying. Highly recommended. As best I can, I'm trying to mimic the procedures used by those professionals. Cleaning, retouching, reframing, and preservation. Here's my used cotton swabs. That's a fair bit of dirt for such a little figure. And here's the before and after on the cleaning step. All of our minis can get dusty over time, but this one was something special. Once those layers of grime were off, I could actually recognize the colors on this mini. The next step is to retouch the chipped areas, so we need to do some color matching. The original owner of this collection was a big fan of Games Workshop. Warhammer Fantasy, Warhammer Quest, 40k, More Time, Inquisitor, Battlefleet Gothic, Warhammer Epic, all that stuff was in the collection. I've got a hunch that this figure was painted with late 90s Citadel acrylic paints. Color names like Dark Angels Green and Midnight Blue immediately popped into my head. We might also be seeing Blood Red and Bubonic Brown. I dug around in my bin of paints and went looking for the closest matches that I could find. I found some options that should be pretty close. Obviously, the original paint job was fairly simple. There's no blending, each block of color is solid. It's just a matter of finding a single correct shade for each color. The off-white primer on this mini seems to be intact, so wherever that is shining through, I'm going to do my best to patch up the paint job. I'm trying to repair the damaged areas while leaving as much of the original paint as possible. My goal with this project is to restore the model and honor the original painter. This Witch Hunter is a small part of a much larger collection that I purchased on Craigslist a few years ago. My understanding is that the collection belonged to a gamer uncle, and his family was selling it off sometime after his death. There were tons of great minis, but most of them were in the condition of this here Witch Hunter. Actually, most of the minis were primed and filthy, but not painted. For many of the minis in this collection, I stripped them in degreaser solution to take them back to bare metal or bare plastic. I've painted some of the minis, and many more are waiting for me in my Goobertown Roulette treasure box. But I have complicated feelings about this collection. Several items are labeled with the name Chris Price. I never met Chris, but in some ways I'm connected to him now. Chris clearly loved these games, but his days of painting minis are over. I joke that I'm painting for two now, and that it's up to me to finish what Chris started. On a more serious note, I do know how much of my own time and energy has gone into this hobby, so I know that in a very real way, I do own a piece of who Chris was. In general, I think I've given Chris's minis a good home here in Goobertown. I'm slowly getting them painted and showing them to the world. 
but it didn't feel right for me to strip all of the minis from this collection, so that's why today I'm trying to restore and preserve Chris's Witch Hunter. This was never a masterpiece, but it was one of the better painted models in the collection, and it is truly irreplaceable. Back to business here, I was able to fill in all of the chipped areas. Some army painter equivalents were great matches for the blue and the green. Removing those glaring points of damage went a long way towards improving the condition of this mini. Again, I'm trying to leave Chris's work intact wherever I can. Plague Brown from Vallejo was close, but not quite for the leather, and it was better when I mixed in a bit of Beastie Brown. Hmm, perhaps the original color was Snakebite Leather. The boots were probably Chaos Black, but Vallejo Black worked just fine. Like so many of his other models, Chris didn't finish painting this. For anything that was left as unpainted primer, well that belongs to me. I'm going to fill in all of the white areas with reasonable colors so that the model looks complete. Metal details get black or possibly a dark silver metallic. Speaking of metallics, the blade of the sword actually looks pretty good, and it only needed a few minor repairs on the edge. There was a bit of stray brown on the boots. I'm not sure if Chris had been contemplating a brown base or not, but I did paint the base brown quickly to give that idea some thought. The original base is warped, either from melty primer or from sitting in a hot attic. I'll replace that with a level base towards the end of the restoration. Straps and the pouch get to be a brown similar to that found on the stock of the pistol. I chose blonde for the hair. That isn't too far off from the white primer that had been the Witch Hunter's hair color for the last decade or two. I painted the rolled parchments off-white as well, again keeping them close to what they've been for many, many years. I've succeeded in covering almost all of the primer, and I'm doing a few last touch-ups. Chris didn't shade or highlight anything, and neither am I. Now that the model is cleaned up, I'm really liking the bold colors from the original paint job. It's quite similar to the box art, but that doesn't make it any less cool. Next I painted on a coat of varnish. This is matte varnish with a bit of gloss mixed in to lead it a bit towards satin. The art restoration pros have all kinds of specialty varnishes that can be removed if necessary, but I'm just using a clear coat from Army Painter. Now it's time to give this piece a fresh new frame. I took my clippers and carefully cut away the warped old base. It's always fun to see what it says on the tab. This says Witch Hunter on one side, and GW95 on the other. I slotted him into a fresh new base. It looks pretty good as flat black. I don't know what Chris would have chosen as a base. The bits of brown on the boots may have been a clue but I'm gonna end up going closer towards gray. I'm also gonna give the base some texture. In keeping with 1990s Games Workshop, I started by gluing down a layer of sand. I painted the sand stonewall gray. When that was dry, I gave it two layers of dark brown wash. That gave an overall grayish brownish base. I think the neutral color base avoids pulling attention, and it really focuses the eye on the bold colors of the mini itself. After edging the base in black, the mini was done. Let's take a look. Well, it's not a masterpiece, but it definitely has some appeal. I'd say maybe 85% of the paint job is original Chris Price, and I feel confident that this holds to the vision that he had when he sat down to paint this witch hunter many years ago. So here's the before and after that you've been waiting for. It's a striking difference, but I hope that you can also see that it's still the same mini. I tried to restore and complete this figure while making as few choices of my own as possible. I tried to let the original paint job be my guide. This was a fun exercise. I did my best to mimic what I've seen in real art restoration projects. Cleaning, retouching, varnishing, and reframing. Makeovers are always more fun when the before picture is a bit of a wreck, and this witch hunter certainly had some room for improvement. This project was also good for the soul. So much of the work of assembling my collection and my bits box was done by Chris, and I wanted to make sure to preserve a little piece of him. This makes me feel a bit better about repainting so many of his other figures. 
Not so long ago, I took an inquisitorial witch hunter from Chris's collection, stripped it bare, and made it my own. A while back, I sent a tank full of dead flies to my friend Casey to be rescued. The vast majority of the models in my Goobertown roulette bin were from this collection. I really am on a quest to finish Chris's pile of minis. But at the same time, it's only fair that I preserve and honor this witch hunter. I think Warhammer Quest may have been special to Chris, because more of those figures were painted than any other game that he owned. He had this whole gang of minotaurs and spiders and bats and rats. These are all plastic figures. They're a bit dusty and primer is showing through in places, but overall they're in pretty decent shape and the paint job does what it needs to do. I've got them laid out here on a bit of modern dungeons and lasers terrain, and it makes me happy to see them in action again. In this hobby, we end up pouring hours and hours into our minis. Our attention, our focus, and our valuable time gets tied up in these little hunks of plastic and metal. It doesn't matter how well they're painted, they're all reminders of happy times. This model is going into my collection of finished minis, and I will protect him as my own. I'm adopting him. This little bugger has many happy years ahead of him. This episode was a bit different, but I really do hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching.